Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Say hello Amber. Hi Amber. <laughs> Hi everyone, nice to meet you. In this video I'm going to show you how I made this guinea pig painting. Oh, can I see? This was my little Abyssinian guinea pig called Smudge. He was really sweet and had such a cheeky nature. I do miss him. He got his name from a little white patch of fur on his nose. We still have his brother Smokey. He's featured in some of my previous vlogs. Here I am roughly measuring the photo with my pencil using the point and my finger then bringing it back down to the paper and roughly seeing where the other eye needs to be. This is my Mono Zero eraser. It's such a handy tool and it's one that I couldn't be without. It's like a mechanical pencil and the rubber pushes out as you press the end. You can get refills for it as well. The rubber is two millimetres wide, so it's great for precision when you're rubbing out. It's also really good for lifting off coloured pencil and creating highlights. This is another technique that I use to check the proportions, kind of like muscle memory. So you make the movements on the photo first a few times, then make the same movement on the drawing, but not touching the paper until you're happy with where the line's going to go. Although I wasn't drawing a line from the eye to the nose, I was just using this to make sure that there was enough distance and it was the right direction to the nose. I'm sorry about my hair being in the way. I hadn't realised how frizzy it was while I was filming this. I'm going to speed this part up now because hopefully you get the idea of how I complete a drawing. This was a very loose sketch for me though, compared to normal. Because of how fluffy he is, I knew I wanted to use the pen to capture the fluffiness rather than the paint. I thought it would have been quite difficult to get that with the brush. So I wasn't really worried about getting the fine details at this stage. Normally it takes me a good couple of hours to draw out a piece. I think it's important because it's the foundations of the artwork and just like with a house, if the foundations aren't right then you won't have a successful finished product. But saying that, this line and wash style is pretty forgiving compared to coloured pencil drawings. Sorry, my head was in the way whilst drawing the front feet, but you'll see the back one in a second. Again, I've kept them very sketchy. I do find feet quite difficult to draw, particularly bird feet but I'm pretty pleased with these. I think having them more sketchy helped because it doesn't draw attention to them. Now I'm just finishing off by adding in some contour lines to give me an idea of where I need to build up the tone and shadow with the watercolour and also refining the ears and the nose. 
One thing I really do struggle with is keeping my pencil lines light. I honestly don't know how other artists can get such delicate lines. If anyone has any tips on this, please let me know. I just end up going over it all with a rubber to lighten it, which is needed anyway, which you'll see when I get to the watercolour. So I'll cover that in a minute, but mine are just far too dark to start with. Okay, moving on to watercolour. Something that is so useful is having a colour chart of all your supplies. This really helps to pick out the right colours to use. That's what I'm doing now. This colour is Van Dyke Brown. And this is Indigo. A mix of a dark brown and a dark blue makes a really good black. This is yellow ochre. This is such a good colour for natural subjects. I very rarely use the more vibrant yellows, like the lemon and cadmium yellows. Oops, who knows what I forgot to do. I mentioned it earlier. Forgot to rub out the pencil lines. The reason you need to do this is because once the water goes on top of the pencil, it basically sets the pencil on the paper and you can't rub it out. So you'll most likely end up with them showing through the paint and it sometimes can end up muddying the colours. My next tip is to use a fluffy brush to brush eraser rubbings off the paper and any other marks that get on the paper. <laughs> oh dear, I'm not doing very well here. Yeah, make sure there's no paint on the paper when you do this. <laughs> But if this does happen, or if you get paint in the wrong place, you just need to put a lot of water onto the paper and then you'll be able to lift it off with a cloth or paper towel. There, disaster averted. So, as I was saying, I use a big fluffy brush because you don't want to use your hands, otherwise you'll put the oils from your skin on the paper. I use a makeup blusher brush for this, but a paintbrush will work just as well, as long as it's very soft. Going back to rubbing out the pencil lines. I mean, all of art is personal preference, of course, and maybe pencil lines showing through is the look you're going for but I think the majority of artists won't want this. I certainly don't. I didn't actually rub out the lines that much though, but as I said, this style is quite forgiving because I do put a lot of paint on. And then with the pen, if a pencil line does show through, it probably won't matter. But if you're wanting to do d really delicate washes, then you'll definitely need to make sure that the pencil lines are very light. Getting back to telling you how I'm painting this guinea pig. So first, I added white to the yellow ochre, and here I'm just mapping out the gingery patches of his fur. I'm using the wet on dry method because I prefer the control you have compared with wet on wet. Now I'm adding in some base colours to go underneath the brown. 
to get the right colour temperature of the brown fur. I'm literally just adding what colours I can see in the photo for this, which is pink and blue. I think I used alizarin crimson for the pinks. I was only adding a very light layer, not very pigmented at all. For the blue, I used Prussian blue mixed with a bit of white. I think this process is called glazing, although maybe you would normally add the pinks and blues on top of the other colours, but this way works for me. That's a bit bright, but as before, just need to water it down and lift it off. Whatever colour that is I'm using, it's got a very strong pigment. I think it was cadmium red hue. And I'm using this more orangey colour now, because the fur on his face is warmer than the rest of the fur on his body. I'm just going back over the gingery patches with a second layer now because with the other colours down now it was really noticeable how pale the ginger patches were. I made sure to let the base layer dry thoroughly before starting with the brown paint I don't really use watercolour in the traditional way. Most paintings that you see are very loose and washy, but I keep my brush marks very controlled and try and build up texture to give the impression of fur. I've always been trying to loosen up with watercolour because I thought that this was how it should be. But if you can create a watercolour painting that's very controlled and it looks good, then why not? There's nothing wrong with that. For me, this was very much a bad case of comparing myself to others. And that's one of the worst things you can do. I was seeing all these beautiful, loose paintings on social media and feeling so inspired by them. But I would be comparing my paintings to theirs. And they've probably been doing it for years, perfecting their skills and style. But I ended up just feeling disheartened because I wasn't really happy with what I'd painted. And so I didn't enjoy the process. And this then spiralled into a creative block because I wanted to paint, but I knew I wouldn't feel good about what I created, so I didn't paint. And at the same time, because I wanted to be painting, I couldn't focus on my coloured pencil drawings either, and so I ended up not doing any artwork at all. I still follow some really talented painters, and I still love and admire loose paintings, but I have accepted that this is just not me. And in doing that, I was able to develop this line and wash style, which satisfies my craving to paint when it strikes, but also my need for refined details. And so far, touch wood, I have always loved how they've turned out. It was the addition of the pen that was the turning point. I realised that the reason I was never happy with the paintings was because they didn't ever feel completely finished. 
and I wondered if adding pen would help. So I thought, well, I don't like this painting anyway, so if adding pen doesn't work, I've not lost anything. And here we are. So for me, the moral of this is definitely let yourself be inspired by other people. This is what art is built on. But never ever compare yourself to them because this will do nothing but get you down. If you are in a creative block, I think the best thing you can do is take a break from social media. Then you could also pull out your artworks, lay them out somewhere, and then have a look at them and find at least one thing in each of them that you do like. Look for similarities in them as well. Think about what you do well and what makes you happy. And then this is what you can develop on. I'm using a warmer brown now for the areas where I'd put the pink down. In hindsight, I could have gone brighter with the pink. Hopefully you can see now how having the colours, the pink and the blue, underneath changes the tone of the brown. You probably noticed that I hadn't painted the feet. I hadn't forgotten them. I was just putting off doing them, which was silly really, because I could have ruined the whole piece after spending all this time on it. Luckily, I didn't though. Now I'm just making sure that the shadows are dark enough using a mix of the indigo and the brown for this. I've been trying to make sure that the brown and the ginger parts blend nicely and so that I'm not ending up with harsh edges between them. To make sure that it looks like it's laying down flat, otherwise it wouldn't look natural. Here I'm adding in the highlights with a pale blue. So now the watercolour is finished and I'm using a 0.1 fine liner to add in the details. It's very important with the eye to make sure that you leave the white space for the reflection. It just won't look realistic enough without this. I prefer to leave it actually white, so just the white of the paper, because you'll find it's very difficult to get it white enough going over a dark colour with a, a white pencil or white watercolour that won't or probably won't show up at all. I've tried so many different white pencils, gel pens, um, a Posca pen and I, the white gel pen works well for whiskers and things but it's still not really a strong enough white for the really strong highlights. You will have seen for this piece that 
I went over the white of the eye with a blue pencil, still leaving a tiny bit of white, but in the photo you can see that the reflection is actually more of a blue, so that would have come from the sky. There's a lot of shadow underneath his ear in the photo so it's important to make sure that you get this really dark in the drawing to make sure that it looks 3D. I decided to go over this with coloured pencil though, so that the blue was richer. I'm making sure to keep the lines directional so that they go in the same direction as his fur but at the same time you don't want them to all be uniform you want them to have slightly different angles and be going in slightly different directions there's not really much more that I can say about the line work well, not that I can think of anyway if you do have any questions about it, feel free to ask. I do zoom in in a minute so you can see it in a bit more detail. It's all the really tiny details that really bring a drawing like this to life. I love how it starts to look when I put in the really wispy hairs. These bits are really fun to do as well. I decided that I wanted to give the highlights a bit more definition so I went over them with a blue coloured pencil. You might have seen that I did try a white but as I said before this it just didn't show up. So we're nearly at the end of this tutorial now. I just need to finish adding in all of the fur and at the end I just go over the highlights or some of the highlights with a white gel pen and I use that to add in the whiskers as well. I really hope that you found this useful and have hopefully learnt something that you didn't know. Please let me know what you thought and if you did like it please give it a thumbs up because this really helps my channel and please subscribe if you haven't already. My next drawing is going to be a coloured pencil drawing of my puppy, well my dog when she was a puppy because I've already done one of our older dog when he was a puppy so we want one of her to match this. 
I'm planning to record this so I should be able to do a few maybe mini tutorials like of how I draw her eye, her nose and anything else like that. If there's anything in particular you'd like to see please let me know and I'll try and do that. Then my next plan is to draw a little foal that I was able to get a really good photo of out on the forest the other day. As soon as I saw him I just knew that I had to draw him so I can't wait to get started on that. I've been wanting to try watercolour paper for my coloured pencil drawings. I knew that I'd need hot pressed so that they don't have too much texture and tooth. But I couldn't decide what brand to go for. I'd heard that a lot of people use Fabriano, but I'd also seen that Arch or Arches is a good brand. Um, but one of the art supply companies was very kind and has sent me some samples. There's Fabriano, which is the only one that's hot pressed. This one looks really good, so I think that's probably the one I'll definitely go for long term. There's Langton Prestige, but this is not, um, so it's got not too much texture, so I think that one might be okay as well. There's Bockingford, but this is rough. And there's another one that doesn't have a name, but that also looks rough. So these are probably too textured to be able to get really good detail. But I'm going to give them all a go, because I think it will be nice to do a comparison video of how I found each different type of paper. I'm not sure what I'm going to draw on each of them yet. I'm tempted to try a B. They are only very small samples, so it will have to be an animal that can be quite compact but still fairly detailed. But yeah, that's my plan for probably the next couple of months, I reckon. I'll be posting progress photos and updates to my social media. So please come and follow me if you haven't already. I'd love to have you. I hope you're all doing okay in this lockdown. Stay safe and I'll see you soon.